Coming up, Luca and the Mavs stun Steph and the Warriors in the fourth quarter. This is Locked On Now NBA. The biggest games, the best performances, expert analysis. You are Locked On Now. What's up, everybody? You are listening to Locked On Now NBA, local experts with the biggest stories on the hardwood. I'm your host, Daniela Bruce, and thank you for making Locked On Now your first listen every weekday. Our Locked On NBA hosts are here to help break down everything from the night in basketball. Superstars met in San Francisco last night, and Luka Doncic wouldn't let a fourth quarter deficit stop him from helping the Mavs steal a win from the Warriors in today's biggest game. The biggest game. The Golden State Warriors thought they had last night's game against the Dallas Mavericks won, but Dallas stormed back from behind big in the fourth to shock the Golden State fans. Locked on Mavericks and Locked on Warriors recap the improbable finish and everything that led up to it. The Dallas Mavericks get a big win in the Golden State against the Warriors. Nick Angster from the Lockdown Mavericks podcast here. The Mavericks were down 21 points at one point in this game. And in the fourth quarter, just absolutely erased it. The Mavericks could not do anything right in the first quarter at all. Couldn't score, couldn't defend. Luka wasn't getting going. No one was getting going in this game. Brunson couldn't get anything going. And then the bench. Spencer Dinwiddie, Davis Bertans, guys came into the game and absolutely made a difference. Spencer Dinwiddie had his best game as a Maverick so far this season and absolutely led that bench unit for the comeback and just was hitting shots in that run. The Mavericks went on a 23-5 to run in the fourth quarter, close to that, and that was absolutely the difference in this game. There were some incredible moments in this, and it just shows that the Mavericks can play a different style of ball. They didn't play any centers down the stretch, played a bunch of switchable guys, played a lot of guards and wings, and were able to beat the Warriors kind of at their own game. No Draymond, no Klay Thompson for the Warriors, but still a good win for the Dallas Mavericks, and they move on and continue to play really well now after the All-Star break. A very frustrating night for the Golden State Warriors. I'm Cyrus Sotsas with Locked on Warriors. A 26 to 1 run by the Dallas Mavericks in the fourth quarter was the story of the game. The Warriors had control for nearly the entirety of the nationally televised broadcast until that fourth quarter when a Warriors lineup that did not have Stephen Curry playing until four minutes remaining in the game, a Warriors lineup where Jonathan Kaminga, who was frustrating, uh, Luka Doncic, both offensively and defensively was not there for the majority of the fourth quarter. The players that were in there, Andrew Wiggins struggled, did not have a great night. Jordan Poole, who the Warriors were counting on, especially with Klay Thompson out because of illness, finished 0 for 7 from the field, 0 from 4 from the three, zero field goals total on an 0 for 11 night. He finished with four points thanks to free throws. Otto Porter Jr., a model of consistency for the Golden State Warriors, only played 21 minutes in a night when they really needed him. This was not Steve Kerr's finest moment. Gary Payne II played a solid game. He only played 26 minutes. We could have seen more from him. And again, when all said and done, the Golden State Warriors failed to capitalize on catching up to the Phoenix Suns, who had lost earlier in the day. So the Warriors remained six games back in the standings with 22 games, I'm sorry, 21 games, now to play the Golden State Warriors fall to 43 and 18. We're going to break this game down in great detail tomorrow. I'm Cyrus Sots. As you can follow me on Twitter at Dog Surf Road Show. You can follow this program on Twitter at Locked on Dubs. The Indiana Pacers used a team effort to take down the Celtics in Indiana yesterday. Just so everyone got a piece of the scoring for Indiana and Locked on Pacers. Gives you a few of the standout numbers from the lopsided final. Tony East here, host of Locked On Pacers, where the Pacers just beat the Boston Celtics, a playoff team in the East, handily at home, 128-107. Extremely impressive win from the Pacers, who had seven guys in double figures. Four guys scored 20-plus. Malcolm Brogdon, Tyrese Halliburton, O'Shea Brissett, and Buddy Heald all shining in a dominant win. And the Pacers have scored pretty well since the trade deadline when they got the new, younger, faster version of their old team, but they haven't defended as well as they did in this game since the break. They did very well slowing down the Celtics in general. Poor shooting nights from Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown and Marcus Smart. 
really tough shooting nights for a lot of Celtics bench players as well. So really one of the better Pacers performances in terms of both sharing the ball and defending. And this was their first game with all three of Malcolm Brogdon, Chris Duarte, and Tyrese Halberton. So definitely something to build off of for the Pacers as they get a little healthier and continue to show off what their new young team can be. We'll talk about all that and more on the Lockdown Pacers podcast. It just wasn't Boston's night last night, and our Lockdown Celtics host knows that, but says there was more to the loss than just Indiana making shots. Here's his take post game. Hey there, John Corrales here from the Locked On Celtics podcast. Boston Celtics losing to the Indiana Pacers 128 to 107. This was an ugly game for the Celtics from the beginning. They could not get anything to fall. Meanwhile, the Indiana Pacers were just shooting lights out. Tyrese Halliburton was hitting everything, including that ridiculous logo shot at the end of a shot clock. When those types of things are falling, it's not your night. But the Celtics were really complicit in a lot of what they allowed the Pacers to do. This is a young team. They're trying to figure themselves out, and they're playing with freedom and lots of room to run, and they took advantage of that. The Celtics defensively were not crisp at all. They were making a lot of mistakes, a lot of missed switches, a lot of missed rotations, and they really let the Pacers kind of get comfortable. And when you get a team like that that's comfortable and start seeing some shots fall, then you start to see those really tough contested shots like Buddy Heald. The Celtics cut the, the, the game to seven points in the fourth quarter. Buddy Heald answers with a very tough contested three-pointer. That's just something when you're comfortable and you've got that confidence, you start to hit crazy shots like that. The Celtics were frustrated by the officials. They were frustrated by shots not falling. They were frustrated by a lot of things. And Celtics fans are frustrated because this is a missed opportunity for the Celtics. They do not have the leeway to be messing up games like this against competition like the Indiana Pacers. This should have been a win. The Celtics should have found a way to get past Indiana. They didn't. This hurts because there's very little time and very little margin for error. For the Celtics, if they want to climb higher in the standings, you can't blow games like this. I'll be talking about it on the Lockdown Celtics podcast, so make sure you're subscribed and watch the show on YouTube. The shot of the night came out of the hands of Kelly Olynyk last night as the Detroit Pistons ended a long losing streak to the Hornets. Lockdown Pistons gives you all you need to know from a buzzer-beating finish in Charlotte. The curse is over. It's finally over. The Detroit Pistons have defeated the Charlotte Hornets for the first time since my freshman year of college, which was not that too long ago. It was just 2017. But the Pistons have finally broke the curse on a Kelly Olynyk game winner. After he spent the first half looking like the corpse of Kelly Olynyk, he came out in the second half, dropped 20 something, 20 points. He had seven of 13 from the field, four or five from deep and hit the fadeaway game winner along the baseline in OT to win the Pistons of the game. Jeremy Grant also had 26 points. Sadiq Bey had 28. Kay Cunningham had 19, 6, and 5. Hamadou Diallo had 13 off the bench. Killian Hayes had 6.7 rebounds, 7 assists. But Kelly Olynyk, man, he just broke the curse. The curse is finally over. I didn't think the Pistons would ever beat the Charlotte Hornets again. I didn't think it was going to happen. I thought it was going to happen at the end of regulation, but then Kate Cunningham misses a free throw, and then LaMelo Ball almost broke my heart, stealing the inbound and taking the midi, but all for that, none of that matters. Kelly Olenek, I take back everything I've ever said about you. The Pistons have broke the curse. Thank God. Coming up, the Clippers and Lakers both could have used wins last night, but only one L.A. team got the W. This is Locked On Now NBA. Football might be over for this season, but basketball is in full swing for both pro and college hoops. From all the latest odds, totals, player performance props, to where the next fired coach is going to land, BetOnline.net is the number one spot for all of your sports betting needs. BetOnline remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just basketball. BetOnline.net is your source for hockey, boxing, and UFC odds. Head to the website today and use your mobile device to learn more about trends and actions. BetOnline, where the game starts. Welcome back to Locked On Now NBA. I'm Daniela Bruce. Let's continue our recap of everything that you may have missed from around the NBA yesterday. Let's go around the league. The Houston Rockets had a chance to force overtime last night at home against the Clippers, but couldn't quite pull off the upset at home as L.A. got a big win in its attempt to push itself back up in the West standings. Locked on Rockets goes over everything you need to know from the nail-biter in Houston. 
Rockets Clippers going down to the wire here in Houston, but the Rockets falling just a little bit short. What's up, Jackson Gatlin here from over at Locked on Rockets. Look, the Rockets had a chance to tie this game up and force an overtime here in Houston against the LA Clippers. Steven Silas drew up a play, Rockets down 98-95, end of regulation. Jalen Green got a really, really good look at a three-pointer that would have tied the game up. Unfortunately, he missed it. He was just 4 of 18 shooting overall in this game, really struggling to put the ball in the basket. And a big reason for that was Avicii Zubac of the LA Clippers Zubox had his his hands all over this game. I mean, he was dominant offensively, getting whatever he wanted on that end. He finished 14 points, 15 rebounds. He also blocked Jalen Green a couple times, and when he wasn't getting blocked shots, I mean, he was still altering shots in and around the rim, making life very, very difficult for the Houston Rockets to get anything going downhill against this Clippers defense. We're going to break down exactly what went wrong for the Rockets, where they could have improved along the course of this game over at Locked on Rockets. The Utah Jazz, of course, needed big nights from their stars to be able to take down the Suns in Phoenix last night. But Utah also got a lot of help from the supporting cast on its way to a win. Locked on Jazz has a recap after Utah beat the best record in the West. The Utah Jazz won their eighth of their last nine with a win over the leaders in the Western Conference, the Phoenix Suns today. David Locke of Locked on Jazz. The Jazz win 118-114 to 114 in a fabulously played game against the Phoenix Suns who were without Chris Paul. And while Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert were vital, of course, for the Utah Jazz, it was three Jazz bench players that led the way. Daniel House, a pickup through COVID contracts, and now an end-of-the-year contract, played fabulous defense on Devin Booker and hit two big threes for the Jazz, and he gives them a second defender on the perimeter along with Royce O'Neal. Jordan Clarkson dropped 20 points in this one coming off the bench in a fabulous shooting game. He went 10 of 17, actually on his way to 22. And Hassan Whiteside had big minutes in the center as the Jazz bench dominated Phoenix's bench, leading them to the 118-114 win. For more, go to Locked on Jazz. The Phoenix Suns lost for the second time in a row for the first time in this calendar year yesterday. It's far from the sky falling in Phoenix, but is there anything to worry about? Locked on Suns fills us in. Suns have not lost two games in a row since Christmas Day and December 27th, but here they are. An unfamiliar feeling, but that's been the case all week. No Chris Paul for the Suns as they lose 118-114 to 114 to the Utah Jazz at home. In the first of back-to-back -back matinee games here on Sunday afternoon, Brendan Clean of Locked on Suns coming to you after the game here below the arena court level here as I just saw the Jazz file through ecstatic with this win. The Suns basically at full health outside of Chris Paul and Cameron Payne, and they will not be pleased with the result of this game. Uh, DeAndre Ayton did not necessarily match Rudy Gobert as he typically does. Devin Booker's 37-7. Not enough. The Suns just unable to create great offense down the stretch. Donovan Mitchell, Jordan Clarkson, Daniel House hit shots and keep the Jazz lead after the Suns do make a little bit of a comeback late in this game after going into the fourth quarter down. So they will need to find a rubric, a recipe on offense to get great shots without their star point guard. And we'll see if they can. For more on these Suns, listen to Locked on Suns wherever you get your podcasts. Speaking of needing wins, LA's other team was also in action last night as the Lakers hosted the Pelicans and Anthony Davis's former team got some revenge. New Orleans dominated Los Angeles and locked on Lakers explained how it all happened. This is Andy Kamenetsky, co-host of Locked on Lakers podcast and the Lakers lose 123-95 to the Pelicans in LA. Absolutely just dreadful performance on both sides of the ball. They turn the ball over 23 times. Gave up 25 points in the process, shot 21% from behind the arc, rounding up. And honestly, nobody played well. I, like, don't let LeBron's 32 points fool you. He was bad, just like everybody was bad. And I thought James Worthy on the Spectrum Sportsnet postgame uh, show summed up the situation very well. He said, quote, there's something going on in this team that they cannot shake or they're not willing to shake it. Right now, they're embarrassed. They're not where they're supposed to be. They see a steady climb they got to make. They really got to do the impossible right now, and I just don't see the mentality to fight for it. Hopefully they do have it, but I don't see it on the court. And 
that is a big time dilemma the Lakers are dealing with beyond all of the other different issues, including Anthony Davis's absence down the line, yada, yada, yada. You just don't see them fighting for this on a regular basis. A lot more to get into, so make sure that you are subscribing to Locked on Lakers' YouTube channel and that you are making Locked on Lakers your first listen wherever you get your podcasts. And that's all today for Locked on Now NBA. Thank you again for making Locked on Now your first listen every weekday. Now that you're done here, make sure your second listens are Locked on NBA and your team's local Locked on podcast. I'm Daniela Bruce, and this has been Locked on Now.